Hallelujah. Don't we need thy Holy Ghost fire to fall on us in this troubled day that we're in. We welcome you this evening as we come together in our spirits and our hearts to worship and to bless the name of the Lord. Would you join with me in prayer? Father, I'm so thankful. Lord, for the Holy Ghost that guides and directs our steps every day. God, and we come into this house, Lord, tonight to lift up your name and to praise your name and to magnify your name. For we know, Lord, where there's two or three gathered together. Lord, in your name that you'll be in the midst. God, I ask your anointing and your blessing upon this service. In the name of Jesus, let's continue our worship and bless him. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know. Because he lives, all 
fear is gone, because I know He holds my future, and life is worth a living just because He An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Oh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Life is worth the living. Amen. Because, amen, you live. Hallelujah. For Jesus is the reason. Amen. For living. Hallelujah. We're going to invite you tonight to come and go to that land. Amen. Where I'm bound. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go. Oh, 
connection with the Savior all the way. The next song says, Jesus on the mainland, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland if you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland now. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. If you want your soul delivered, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainline now. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you need the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainline now. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Jesus on the mainland now. Jesus, Jesus, tell him what you want. Jesus, Jesus. 
Praise for that tonight. Amen. I believe he can always be on the main line. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue this worship as our choir comes up at this time and ministers to you in song tonight. Jesus up tonight. Amen. No matter where we're at, what we're going through, what we're facing, He is always on the main line. He's always on the direct connect. He's always just a tweet or a Facebook status away. And I don't mean that literally. I mean it's as, as instant as those things seem to be. Jesus is much more instant and direct and readily available to help us if we'll just reach out to Him. Yesterday, I, uh, speaking of technology, I posted at the office, or in the office this afternoon, I figured out how to make it tell you where I'm at, and I think that's a little too much information for some folks. But I do that every now and then, so I posted that I was in the church office. The phone rang later that, you know, within the hour or probably, somebody wanted to speak with Pastor, and I'm like... Okay, just thinking how they know I was here. I mean, I know I live here, it seems. But they made a comment, if I understand the conversation right. Oh, I saw on Facebook, Pastor posted he was in the office, so I thought I'd call and speak with him. You never can get away from people. But as readily as available as we try to be to each other and as, as instant as that technology is, I'm so thankful that when I can't find a cell phone and I can't find a landline, I can't find a Facebook or a, or a Twitter account or any of that nature. All I've got to do is call out to Jesus. 
He's just at the mention of His name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing two songs for you tonight. The second one will be sweeter as the days go by. Brother Roger will lead it in just a moment. The first one is a new one for us. Not, not a new song. I've heard it elsewhere before. You might have heard it, but it's new to us. This simply is entitled, I Give Myself Away. Uh, we practiced it tonight. I said, let's sing it tonight. I said, i got to go to take care of some meeting at 5.15. I'll be back about 5.35. Well, it's now 5.35. Now I'm back. I didn't make it back in time to run over it one more time with them. But I believe it's simple enough that they can sing it to you tonight and you'll get the gist of it. And I'm here tonight to give myself a way that he can use us. Amen. Amen. You worship with us tonight.
Jesus is sweet. Amen. Amen. Welcome this evening. If you've noticed your bulletin this morning, you've got your month's calendar in there. Be sure to post that. But to remind you tonight, uh, after the service here, the women's discipleship will have some meeting. And uh, then our praise team, Tuesday, 6.30, prayer meeting, 7.30. Midweek service Wednesday, men's fellowship Thursday at 7 o'clock, Bible study. Wanted to remind you of that. And look at this, the ladies' night out. The sisters' Friday night meeting at uh, 6.30 at uh, Italian Garden in Winter Garden. So uh, I'm just wondering if I can kind of go to the booth next door, you know. And, okay, you know. Uh, you know, they got pretty good food there. So, ladies, let's not forget that. Then a special Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, men's uh, uh, Father's Day breakfast. So we invite all the men to be here and this at the Fellowship Hall at 9 o'clock Saturday morning. Then let's not forget our solemn assembly at 6 o'clock. There's something you can get connected to. Get your calendar, see what's happening, and uh, the Lord's coming back too, you know. So if you miss some of them because the Lord comes back, that's all right. But if the Lord doesn't come back, get connected to something. You'll be blessed, and you can bless others. We're going to ask the ushers to come at this time as we worship the Lord with our giving, returning our tithe giving special love gifts, su uh, seeds for souls, that special offering that helps operating expense. And I know the Lord will bless you when you give. Give more. Somebody says, well, I can't give. Give what you got, and God will bless you that you can give more. Amen? I'm going to ask Pastor Ricky if he would ask the blessing over this part of our worship. Worship him. Let it be worship as we give and bless the Lord.
tonight, if you're visiting with us or you are in town for a family, we're delighted that you're here with us at the Okoe Church of God. Can we give all of our guests a hand clap of appreciation tonight? <laughs> Amen. For those that are watching uh, via the internet, we welcome you to our 6 p.m. service. God met with us this morning around this place at 8.30 and at 10.45, and God blessed us, and I have just been basking in His presence all day. Amen. I found this afternoon a couple pieces of green Play-Doh over here. If you were here this morning, that will make sense to you. If you wouldn't, well, I'm sorry. We just had a good time allowing the Lord to mold us and to make us to be what He'd have us to be. Amen. Amen. I want to take care of a little bit of business tonight here in uh, the Sunday night service. And several weeks ago, um, I met with the elders, in the tr- or I met with uh, the uh, general church. We had a general church called business meeting, and I presented to them uh, a couple job descriptions, and uh, they uh, carried and approved all of those. Uh, one of those was an associate pastor job description. As you know, Pastor Renfro has been op- occupying that position since January. And uh, we did not have an official job description, and it was important that we operate. I believe it should be the very best it can be. So we took care of that in the business meeting back in May, and we also uh, presented to the body at that time a uh, job description uh, for staff pastor. And as you know, in the past, uh, we have had a visitation pastor, we've had a Christian education pastor, uh, we've had an outreach pastor. Just it depends on what we're what we're doing, and uh, that gets a little overwhelming at times. None of them had an official job description. And uh, so I, in prayer, as I was seeking the direction for the church, um, just uh, felt the Lord uh, put that thought or that concept in my spirit. And I presented that to uh, the church in a business meeting, and it was carried in pass. So we're going to have to take care of a little bit of business tonight and just uh, align what we do with what our, our church uh, business meeting says we do. So I'm going to ask tonight those individuals that I have spoken with regarding staff pastors, if they'll come and if they'll meet me at the main floor tonight, them and their spouses. We just got to do a little bit of housekeeping and uh, get everybody on the same page. I believe it's important we do that. And uh, I believe the church business should be the very, very best of business in the world. Amen. It should be above board. It should be clean. It should be done with integrity. And uh, you say, well, some of these folks, I realize they've been around for a while. Yes, they have. You have to center up. Slide down this way. Uh, My OCD won't allow you to be off center. Slide on down a little bit more. Hallelujah. All right, Sister Leslie, won't you change your size with Brother Tim? That way all the ladies are on the same side. Now I feel better. You're still not quite center. Slide down a little bit more. And um, I'm, they don't want to do this, but I told them they had to tonight. And uh, you know for several, I guess almost two years now, uh, Tim, not Tim, but Kevin, has been going to the nursing home at Golden Pond. And uh, it's had a title of an outreach pastor, and uh, it'll be changed to a staff pastor. Uh, Tim and Leslie have been serving uh, Leslie and Children's Church. And uh, Tim and Leslie together with uh, Journey Fellowship. And as you know, they passed their exhorters a few weeks ago. And uh, we took care of that. So I don't believe any Christian should sit still in the church. And I definitely don't believe any, any person that's credentialed with the great church of God should sit still in the church. And I just believe if they're going to be a part of Okoe, they're going to work. And I've told them that. You're going to work or you'll find somewhere else to go. Now, I don't mean for all you to leave, but I, I do mean for these folks to be involved. If God's called them to ministry until he opens up doors elsewhere for them, if this is where God's called them, they need to be involved in ministry. And then uh, Pastor Mike and Pastor Shelley are no strangers to us. And Pastor Shelley, I'm going to tell on you, she come to me this afternoon and she says, do I have to stand up there again? And, uh, you know, a few weeks we transferred them back in to our membership. And I said, oh, yes, you must go through it all again. And uh, we met with them before service. But I'm going to give them a charge. They've received their job description. Uh, basically, they're here to serve you, to serve the church, and to continue in their volunteer status. Um, but to serve you and have a little bit of uh, organization and teeth to what we're doing. So let me give you the charge tonight, guys. And you're going to answer and we're going to pray. The Lord who called the twelve. The Lord who commissioned and sent forth the 70, and the Lord who empowered the 120 in the upper room, and who by His Spirit selected the leaders of the apostolic church, continues to call men and women into His service today. One of the most wonderful calls, men and women, is their call to serve through pastoral ministries. 
of the church. Your appointment as a staff pastor needs to be perceived by you as a call from the Lord Jesus himself. It is the call of the great teacher who said, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and to bear fruit, and that fruit will forever last. Will you accept the call to service in your church as, the, as a call from God? Will you do it by committing yourselves without reservation to the church's message, the church's teaching, the church's leadership program, and the church's worldwide ministry? In dependence upon God, do you pledge yourself to teach the Bible, to faithfully fulfill all of your duties, to live a consistent Christian life, and to earnestly seek to win to Christ those who are under your care? If so, will you simply respond by saying, We will. We will. To every member of the church family, may it be a truth said of us that we minister get together. May the words of Jeremiah 15 be true when it says, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. Realizing that our Lord may soon return, and I believe His coming is ever at hand. Amen. Realizing that our Lord may soon return, and knowing the fields already are ripe for harvest, will you join with me in the leadership of this church as we continue to partner together in ministry and we reach West Orange County for the love and for the family of Jesus Christ. If you will agree with me tonight, would you simply let it be known by standing to your feet of saying, Pastor, we will continue to pray that God will bless us in all that we do at Okoe. This is our church. Oh, I know it's God's church. He bought it with the blood of His Son, Jesus. But He's allowed us to be a part of it. He's allowed us to say, will you go out into the highways and the hedges and will you compel them to come? I'm going to ask the musicians if they'll give me some music very softly tonight. Pastor Renfro, would you come and let us anoint these men and their spouses tonight? That God will anoint them and that through their call and through their ministry, God will be uplifted and the name of Jesus will be preached and heaven will be enlarged because of the ministry of this church. Amen. Would you stretch your hand toward heaven? Let's pray together tonight. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you, Lord, for the call to ministry. Thank you, Lord, for the servant attitude that we must have to be a part of the kingdom of God. Lord, I love you tonight and I thank you for all that you're doing. Lord, I love you tonight and thank you for the blood of Jesus that still washes away the sins of me. And Lord, I pray tonight as we anoint tonight as a family, as the church of God here in Okoe, Lord, that our desire will be to reach the harvest that any cost. Lord, it'll be good to go out and to find that one, Lord, that needs a Savior, to find that one that needs a rescue, Lord, to find that one that needs to know about the love of Jesus. Lord, not only in our staff, not only in our leadership, Lord, not only in our musicians and our ushers and our teachers, but in all of our workers and in in all of our laity, Lord, in all of our membership, Lord, let us have a desire to share the love of Jesus. And let us, Lord, have a desire to see people born into the kingdom of God. Lord, it will forever give you praise and honor and glory for it. In the lovely name of Jesus, we pray tonight. That name that is above all names, we ask it. The name of Jesus, we give you praise tonight. And the church said, Amen. And amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Bless you. Bless you, guys. Bless you, sis. Bless you, sis. Hallelujah.
praise your mighty name. So excited when we can continue to see people grow in the ministry. Amen. Amen. Be praying for them. Some of them are taking other tests. Some of them are going into internship. Some of them are going for ordained bishops. So uh, we need to push ourselves to be the very best that we can be. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Cherith if she'll come around. She's on the list to sing tonight. Worship with her as she ministers to you in song. years ago went out in sin I had no hope no peace within down on my knees in agony I prayed to Jesus and he gladly set me free I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul rolled away it made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Oh, now I can feel him by my side. My feeble steps, he comes to God. When trials come, he comforts me. Through faith in him or sin, I have the victory. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing it, shout it, for he's everything to me. Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now at his dear feet. Just humbly bow, confess to him your every sin. He'll save and cleanse you, give you peace and joy within. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Amen. I'm glad my sins have been washed away. Amen. Amen. Speaking of people in ministry, speaking of uh, 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 guys being nurtured and groomed, uh, we have the privilege tonight to have a young man with us, Brother Jeremy Fussell. I believe he's met Tim and Leslie through the CAMS process and attending the Bowling Green Church of God. Some of you that have been around a long time, you've heard Brother Hanks mention uh, the Bowling Green Church. You've heard Brother Hanks mention uh, their pastor, Brother Howell, and that's where Jeremy attends. Uh, Jeremy will be taking his exhorters test in October, is that correct? And so uh, he's uh, up and coming to minister in the Church of God. And um, several weeks ago, two weeks ago, he was here with you on a Sunday morning. And I was out of town and didn't get a chance to meet him, but did that today, had lunch together. And I'd asked him earlier, uh, before today, if he would be ready to preach tonight. Little did I know that this would be his first opportunity to preach outside of this home church. Now, we've been there before, and I will tell you, I've stood behind this pulpit as recently as of this morning. I don't consider myself, I know it all by no means. I still get nervous coming to this pulpit. I'm thankful for that because the moment that I think I can do it without his anointing, we're all in trouble. And I can only imagine tonight, maybe the nerves, maybe the feeling anticipation that one would feel knowing that this is their first opportunity now you remember a few months ago uh, brother Brandon Woodard was with us from the Linden Church and I didn't know when I invited him to preach he had never preached out of his home church and his first time was here and isn't it amazing how God just puts it together I'm thankful we may not ever cross paths with brother Jeremy again after tonight I don't know but if we don't I'm glad to know that this church had a part of what God's doing in his life now, home folks, I want you to get behind him. I want you to amen him. I want you to help him. I don't know what he's going to preach on. I didn't ask him. 
I trust he's talked to the Lord about this service, and I'm going to receive whatever he has. And so after our second special, Sister Rachel's on the schedule to sing tonight. After she finishes ministering to you in song, the next voice you'll hear after that will be the voice of Brother Jeremy Fussell. When he comes, take this pulpit. Make him feel welcome. Let's get behind him tonight and ask God to help him. God bless you. Sometimes my spirit is low And it seems I can hardly go But still I see victory This sometimes I'm walking by faith Cannot see what lies before me But still I see victory so I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Oh, and I just gotta tell you. Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sometimes the battle gets hot. And it seems like we're fighting a lot, but remember, we're standing on the right. Oh, Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and I'd give up too close. You know, you're about to lose. Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because. I'm covered by His blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sometimes the battle gets hard, and it seems like I'm fighting a lot, but I remember. I'm standing on the rock. So, Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and give up two calls. You know, you're about to lose. Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Oh, and you may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. of Jesus. You know, the blood of Jesus is stronger than anything that you got to go through. The blood of Jesus is stronger than cancer. The blood of Jesus is, is stronger than the high blood pressure that you go through. All you've got to do is put it under the blood of Jesus and you can't be healed. It's by His blood and His stripes that we are healed. Man. If you would, turn to Acts chapter 1. I'm going to flip one page to another. So I want to start with verse 4. And it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them, and they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard me. For John truly baptized thee with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since. When they therefore will come together, they will ask of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? 
And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive the power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto them both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Brother Thomas, would you pray for me? I use some words that you guys are not used to. You gotta forgive me. I'm used to dealing with the youth. Uh, I am a youth minister, so I might use some slang words. You know, y'all might not understand. You know, if there's a young person standing next to you, you might have to ask them. What I want to do is now in Acts chapter two. I just want to read a couple of verses here, and it says, "And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters." They shall prophesy, and your young man shall see visions, and your old man see dreams. And upon my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out on those days the Spirit, and they shall prophesy. What I want to talk about, these are the last days. These are the days. There, there's not much time left. You know, um, I did grow up in the Church of God. I did grow up going to church with my grandparents. And I can remember as a little kid, they always talked about Jesus is coming back. You know, and I always took it for granted. But these are the last days. The signs are coming. These are the signs of the times. So what I want to preach about tonight is staying focused and staying full of the fire. This is the last days. He said that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh in the last days. These are the last days. We cannot let our fire grow out and blow out right now. This is the time that we need to stay on fire for God. The service that we had this morning was awesome. It was a presence of God like 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 never before. You know, sometimes we might take it for granted, but you never know until you sit in a church that the Spirit doesn't move, that the Spirit's not moving, that you're truly grateful for where you're at. You know, the, God really showed up in this place tonight, or this morning, and the presence of God was so strong. You know, this is the type of services that we need to carry on. You know, you can't expect to keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out if you have nothing to pour back into you. You know, eventually you'll run dry. Eventually it's like pouring out a glass of tea. You keep pouring and pouring and pouring until there's nothing left in the picture. You're ran out. You've got to keep filled. you got to keep going. Even as the young ministers, as pastors, um, you have to have somebody keep pouring into you so you can pour out into somebody else. You know, when me and Tim went through the CAMS program, and Sister Leslie, they had, um, they told us, Brother Shane told us that there was a, a, a big room full of filing cabinets, real tall, full of preachers that didn't make it, that had their license, that had to surrender their license. It's because they let that fire burn out is why. You know, Brother Tony Faulkner um, is a friend of mine. He's going through the MIP. He actually went up to Tennessee and seen the actual room where all those um, files are. And it's, it's full because it's people let their fire burn out. You know, you have to keep the fire of God in you. You've got to get into that river. You've got to not only get in ankle deep, but you've got to get in over your head. you got to keep the fire of God in you. You know, and of course, Satan's always going to do what he can to distract you from getting to that fire. You know, he might bring on trials and tribulations upon you. You know, he might hit you in your finances. He might take away and put uh, things in your marriages. He might use your kids against you. He might, you know, use sickness and disease and everything else upon you to get you to where you take your minds off of God. But when we come through the doors, we come to minister as well as be ministered to. When we hit those doors, we come with God on our mind. You know, I'm just as guilty as anybody else that I think about things that goes on at work and everything else when I hit the church doors. But, you know, I could be missing on the greatest blessing of my life by not coming in and focus on God when I get there. When we come through these doors, we need to be full of fire and keep focus on God. You know, in Isaiah 54, 17, it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, what he says is, what it means there is no spiritual warfare. No spiritual weapon will be used against you. And see, we read that verse and we quote that verse and we're always saying, you know, no weapon will formed against you shall prosper. And we use that, we use that, and use that. But in the verse before it, nobody quotes that. 
in the verse before it, it assures you why he says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He says because he has created the smith. In other words, what he's saying is I'm the one who formed the one who's forming that weapon against you. I'm the one who tells him how far he can go and no further. You know, he's in control of every situation that you go through. Every every trial, tribulation, heartache, everything that goes does not go without going through his hands first. You know, and that's where we have to stay on top of the, our game. You know, if we're going to do anything for God, we've got to stay. And we've got to keep vigilant of the enemy's tactics and the things that he uses. You know, a lot of times you never know what kind of, where your faith is and where you stand until trouble comes back a second time. When the trouble comes back a second time, then you're able to stand up and find out where you've been and, and how you've grown through the last trial that you went through. You know, and also it talks about, you know, all type of spiritual warfare throughout the Bible. And it, it's like Job, you know. God told him, he said, you can do anything that you want to, but you cannot take his life. You know, and that's the way it is. God will allow situations to happen. He'll let things act crazy and get out of control before he shows up on the scene. You know, it might look crazy to you now. It might be the roughest time that you've ever had, but this is the time that Jesus actually shows up. It's always the roughest before he shows up. You know, I remember the story of the uh, boy that had the demon's possession, and Jesus came. And when Jesus came up there and go to lay hands on him, you know, the disciples couldn't cure the boy. The disciples couldn't make the demons come out. But as soon as Jesus showed up, that's when the devil started acting up. And that's the way it is. Right before the devil comes out, and that's when Jesus shows up. You know, the devil's going to start showing out when Jesus shows up. You know, and that's where we got to keep a vigilant eye. You know, I can remember the days, you know, when the Holy Ghost would fall. You know, I would go with my grandparents to, to the church. And they would have to sit me underneath the pew so I wouldn't get stepped on, you know. And that's the fire, that's the stuff I remember. You never know what you're going to use or what you're going to do. You know, grandparents, bring your kids, to, your grandkids to church. Bring your kids to church. You know, you never know what kind of memories will be made at church that they'll always remember. You know, they might not be right now, but they will come back. You know, you might have children right now that's lost and, and undone and as far away from God as you can think of, but. They'll, you never know what you bring them to church meant to them. You never know when that time comes, when they're flat on their back and have to look up, when God's going to say, all right now, remember this time when your mama took you to church? Remember this that was said to you? And they will lead them back. You know, don't give up. This is not the time to give up. Right now, we need to be out doing whatever we can to win souls. You know, a lot of churches have failed and gone dry because they quit preaching about salvation in the Holy Ghost. You know, they want to know why the churches are not filling up like they should. It's because they don't preach about salvation in the Holy Ghost no more. They're all talking about how we can get rich and what we can do and what programs we can have and what we're going to do when we get out there. But it's not about writing self-help books and everything else. It's about staying focused on God. It's about winning souls. It's about getting filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, it, this is the last day. This is what we've been destined for. We could have been destined for any time in the world, but we've been destined for this time now. God is using us at this point to reach souls because this is the final days. You know, you might think that you're nothing, but with the Holy Ghost, fire burning inside of you, you can do anything. It says that you are a witness. You go out and be a witness in, to all the countries. You know, the Holy Ghost will help you. The Holy Ghost is there. To help you. you might not know what to say you might not know what to do but the Holy Ghost will be there to comfort you and to guide you and tell you what to say and when to say it you know you're going through the trials and tribulations of life the Holy Ghost is a comforter he says he goes away so that one can come back the comforter could come back you know no matter what you go through in life Jesus is always there the Holy Ghost is always going to be there to comfort you you know and I don't understand Pentecostal churches nowadays have, have, have gotten so far away. I'm not saying the church of God, but Pentecostal in general. I've seen a, um, a survey somewhere that that Pentecostal churches, less than 50% of the members of the Pentecostal church does not have the baptism of, or has the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Less than half. I think it was like 37% has the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, the church of God, that's what makes us different than everybody else is the belief of the Holy Ghost. You know, what are we doing as members and as churches and as witnesses that we can't preach and teach about the Holy Ghost? You know, that's a sad state when only 37% is filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, and that's what we need to do. And it's not only up to the preachers, it's up to us to go out once we leave these walls, to go out and minister. We need to go out beyond these four walls and go out and reach whoever we can reach in these last days. There's an urgency, an urgency to go out and win souls. You know, the devil's going to use anything he can, though, as soon as you get out there to throw any type of a hindrance at you. 
You know, he's going he's gonna to throw everything he can at you to, to try to distract you, to try to pull you away, to do whatever he can. You know, I, there was, um, I have a feeling that, you know, when I was praying, I felt it on my heart strong that there's people that, that's going through trials and that it would have to be at this church because this is where I was praying at, that there's people in the church that's going through the roughest time that you've ever been through the roughest time you've ever been through. I don't know if it's spiritually. I don't know if it's financially. I don't know what it could be. I don't know if it's sickness or what. But I know that your time's almost up. You're fixing to come out of it. trial that you've been through has done nothing but bring you to where God wants you. You know, the people that's left you alone, the people that has nothing to do with you no more, that's turned their backs on you, you know, you took it as a heartache. You took it as, you know what, you know, there's something wrong with me. You know, all these people are leaving my life. All these people are gone. All, all these things are happening to me. But God's trying to get you to a place where you depend upon Him and only Him. It's not you. It's not the things that you went through. You know, it, you might feel like you're all alone, but you're not. He's getting you to a place, and he's getting prepared for another season. Just like Paul, he was going through the roughest time of his life, and he did not know that he was fixing to come across the biggest revival that he's ever been. You know, he went to an island, and, and the revival fell so strong. You know, he thought it was the worst time. But I'm here to say, you're fixing to fall into your best revival season that you've ever had. You're fixing to come out of the situations that you've been through. And you're fixing to come through the test with flying colors. But it's because of your faith and your patience. And it's through your perseverance. And it's your belief in God. God's fixing to bring you out of whatever it is that you went through. The pain, the torment, the finances, the sickness, whatever it is that you've went through, God's fixing to deliver you of it. And he brought this to my mind. My mind. It's the story of Peter as he was walking on the water. You know, he was in the boat with a whole bunch of people. And he said, and everybody was scared. They said, you know, and I, like again, I, I got to apologize. I'm with the youth, so I might paraphrase, and, and this is the way I, I'm just using it. You know, he gets out there and he says, everybody's scared to death. They think they see a ghost out there, and it's Jesus. And he said, don't be afraid. And Peter says, if that's you, Lord, let me come out there and walk with you. He said, basically what he's saying is, Lord, I might be with these guys. They might be scared, but I have the faith. Let me come out there and walk with you. If this is you, let me come out there and walk with you. And as he starts to walk on the water, he gets out of the boat. He has enough faith to get out of the boat, out of his comfort zone to walk towards Jesus. The greatest miracle of his life is coming because he's walking to Jesus and he's leaving his comfort zone. He's getting there and he's starting to walk. And then all of a sudden, he starts looking at the waves. He starts looking at everything crashing in above him, left and right. It's coming over his head. And he's starting to look around. And he's sitting there saying, you know, I, and then this one, I'm just saying to myself, I know he's looking around saying, you know, wow, what have I gotten myself into? And he starts to sing. And he says, save me, Savior. He reaches down his hand, picks him up, and saves him. And then he says, why'd you doubt? You know, that's what we do. We get out of the boat and out of our comfort zone. And as soon as we start walking to Jesus and we start looking at him and we have our eyes on him, as long as we have our eyes on Jesus and not our situations or our problems, we're going to walk. We're going to make it through the trial. We're going to make it through the fire. We're going to make it through the sickness. We're going to make it through the marriage problems. We're going to make it through the finances. As long as we keep our eyes on him, we cannot look to the left nor to the right, but we've got to stay focused. We've got to stay straight ahead. We need to keep going like we've never gone before. You know, you're standing next to your greatest miracle of your life. The greatest miracle of your life you're coming to. But you've got to stay focused on Jesus. And you've got to have enough faith to get out of the boat and walk to Him. You know, you've got to make that first step. You know, a lot of times you might be in a situation right now that you were supposed to come out of a long time ago, but you didn't make that step of faith to come out and start moving. Once you make that step and start walking on the water, that's when everything's going to make a difference. You know, this is, we've come too far to give up now. You know, we're on, we're on track to, to this. 
he says he's going to pour his spirit upon all flesh. These are the days that he's using us to do what we need to do for God. He's using us to witness. He's using us to move. You know, we need to start planting seeds. And yes, it is good to, to everybody's talking about, you know, every time you, you turn on the TV, they're talking about planting seeds. You know, they're planting seeds in the ministry, planting seeds here, planting seeds there. And that's great. And that's good. And that's what you need to do is help the ministry out. But, you know, right now, I believe we need to be focused on planting seeds as far as salvation. Planting seeds into people. Letting them come by and water and grow. You know, the seeds that you put in, you never know what you're going to get out of them when you plant a seed. We need to be worried about souls right now and the Holy Ghost and what God wants us to do. You know, it all means nothing if there's a soul that doesn't get saved. You know, you never know what you're going to say. You know, all these churches are shutting down their services on Sunday nights. They're shutting down their services on Wednesdays. You know, just having one service. What happens if that one service, somebody comes on a Sunday night that they couldn't make it on a Sunday morning because they work? That's one soul that's getting turned away. You know, we got to be more focused to leave the church doors open 24-7 if need to be. You know, we need, this is the days that we need to be focused on God and not everything else in this world and the next big thing. You know, we got to be focused on where we're at. These are like, it could be, it could be, it could be anybody's brother. It could be anybody's mother. It could be anybody's daughter or son that needs to be witnessed to. You know, they might not listen to mom and dad, but they'll listen to you. You know, I encourage you guys to get out and start witnessing. I encourage you guys to go out and try to win souls for the Lord. I'm getting, I encourage you not only to go out to your own families, but other people's families in the church. You know, you might not have to go out there, but you might know brother so-and-so's brother or mother or somebody else, and you come out and witness to them. You know, tell them about the church and bring them to the church. You know, that's how we're all going to grow is if we come to the church. You know, we got to get them in them doors. Once we get them in the doors, then God will do the rest. The Holy Ghost will do the rest. But if the presence of God is not in the church, the Holy Ghost is not going to function. The conviction is not going to be felt. You know, it's going to take twofold of the Holy Ghost working. It's going to take the Holy Ghost and the anointing and the preaching. And it's going to take the Holy Ghost and the anointing and the conviction to convict that soul. But if the presence of God is not in the church, there's not souls going to be saved. If a sinner's not being taught that they're, they're doing something wrong, they don't know unless they're being told. There's no sense in sugarcoating the Word of God. You know, there's no sense in reading only partial word of it. You tell them the whole Bible. If they're getting saved by any other reason, they're getting saved for the wrong reason. If they're getting saved because they believe that they're going to inherit a bunch of money they're getting saved for the wrong reasons you know I, I it, it burns me up sometimes and I apologize for that because but people they have these mega super mega churches and all they want to talk about is all the good things in the Bible and they want to tell you everything else but they don't want to tell you that you know it is a struggle so what happens to that sinner that's in that church that gets saved under the preaching that there's nothing wrong as soon as something goes wrong they think there's something wrong with them they think that there's nothing there you know they think there's automatically them and it's too hard and they must be doing something wrong because the Bible says that a Christian won't suffer you know unless they're being taught that they never know you know we've got to do our part and to read and preach the whole Bible not just part of the Bible the whole Bible you know that's like brother Thomas was preaching this morning about the clay you know you're going to go through the fire you're going that's part of it you're being molded you know God will allow that to happen a lot of people say well God's a good God he won't allow anything to, to, to try he won't put more on you than you can bear that's understandable but he will allow certain things to situations but don't get him wrong he's still in control he is still by your side the whole time he has not given up on you he is still there the whole time and, and, and it's, it's, it's the emphasis this is the last day the way I look at it and the way I used to tell the kids is that, you know what, it's time to get old school. It's time that we need to get back to the old school way of doing things, the old school Pentecostal. You know, the, the way that, you know, you, you have revivals. You run revivals. You run revivals with evangelists. You come in, and, you know, a lot of times that we have revivals, especially where I'm at, you know, you might get two or three people that show up. The fire of God, the hunger is not there. You've got to get the hunger back. You've got to want that passion back. You never know what's going to happen in a service unless you come expecting. You know, we need to have the fire of God back. You know, if it takes a revival every other month to do it, then that's what you do. But it's going to be the foundation of the church that comes out and supports the revival. It's going to be the foundation of the church that's always going to be there and say, Pastor Thomas, I've got your back. You know, I've got you back, Pastor Thomas. Whatever happens, whatever goes down, I'm there for you. I'm going to lift you up. You know, if I'm the only one showing up, I'm going to be the only one show up. But it's going to take that. It's going to take that to build the church. You know, y'all have a great church here. You have a great pastor here. I mean, everybody here, as soon as I walked in, you know, two weeks back, everybody's so loving and kind and, you know, smiling. And, and that's a reflection of your pastor. You know, y'all have a great pastor here. 
but you know it, it's a burden on him he can't do it alone he's got to have help and that's where we've got to step in and lift his load a little bit you know we've got to want it not only as doing the job around the church but spiritually you know when he's up here at the and preaching and stuff me stand behind him and support him and tell him what kind of great job he's doing and build him up spiritually you know and tell him but we need to be here helping him pray in these altars just as much as we do anything else he can't be the only one in the altars praying you know when there's conviction being felt and there's a sinner up here we don't need to be sitting out back we need to be up here praying with them we need to have the flow of God you know we cannot be a hindrance you never know what's going to happen in the service a person could be healed of cancer a person could be set free from uh, afflictions and, and drugs and alcohol in any kind of service but if we hinder the service and only have one person sit up there and pray during it you know and, and nobody wants to come around the person and pray you never know what that person is going through you never know what kind of blessing you're going to get for praying for that person you know we have to have a more emphasis on the church and, and moving in that direction you know and, and I just feel it so strong that the devil is going to do everything he can just like I was talking about with, with Peter walking on the water you're going to get enough faith to get out of that boat and you're going to start walking and the devil's going to come after you he's going to start coming after you and it's going to be a fight but you've got to stand there and fight and it's going to be hard because you're fighting an enemy that knows your weaknesses you're going to be fighting an enemy that knows what you're going through he knows what to offer you if you're an alcoholic he knows to offer you alcohol if you have a drug addiction he knows to offer you drugs he's not going to offer you anything that you're not already addicted to or have a passion for you know, and that's where we have to be. We have to be aware of his games, and we've got to stand up and fight. But we don't need to fight him any other way but reading the word. You know, we have to fight him with scripture. You know, on our knees in prayer. Two-minute prayers a day is not going to work it. You have to sit there on your knees and pray and fast and go. You know, it's a, I remember growing up, people used to fast three times a week, two or three times a week, just fast for no reason. Now we have a hard time getting somebody to pray for five minutes. You know, that's the state that we're in. These are the last days. People are waxing cold. It's over. People are, are, are numb to the situation. But the fire that will burn in you if you keep by the word and keep doing like you're supposed to and keep fasting and keep on your knees and keep in prayer, you never know what's going to happen. You're never going to know what's happening in the Koei Church of God unless you're on your knees praying for the church. You know, and it's, and it's fine to pray for your own needs and everything else. But if you've got to pray for others. You've got to pray for others' needs. You've got to pray for the Holy Ghost to move. And I believe with all my heart, if you all come in one mind and one accord, a great revival can bust out in this church. A great revival can fall in this church. Because in Matthew 18, 30, it says, If any two people agree, that's all it takes. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he'll be also. You know, that's what we have to be. We have to bind together and work and love and labor. As a, as a church and as a family. Yeah. Sister Rachel, would you come? I was going to do, um, at lunch, me and Pastor Thomas was talking about, um, talk about you know just the, the things of the church and how it's going to, it's going to go down as far as um, basically the the pastors being accepted in and stuff like that so I kind of knew what place I was supposed to go in and in the order that things was going to go in he asked me about the altar service um, but I want to do something different for the altar service I do want to at first if Pastor Thomas, would you come up and your family come up? I just felt led in my heart to do this. Church of God, will you support your pastor and come forward?
God's going to move in a mighty way because you're going to stay focused. You're not going to worry about anything else but Jesus. This church has your back, Brother Thomas. They are here for you. Everyone is lined up behind you. God's fixing a move in this church in a mighty way. And it's because of the church's faithfulness. It's because of everybody on one mind and one accord. I want you guys to pray for your pastor. Myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. myself away so you can use me my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself give myself to you oh my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself give myself to you and give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice. Oh, my dreams, oh, my plans, Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Yes, I give myself away so you can use me. my own to you I belong I give myself give myself to you oh my life is not my own to you I belong give myself give myself now before we all go somebody in here needs a touch from God Somebody that I was talking about is in this church tonight. God's confirmed that the person that was talking about going through the fire and going through the trial and going through a sickness and going through something in this either financial, through your marriage, through your sickness, maybe it's a combination. But God says if you come and step out of the boat and you get out of that boat and make your walk towards Jesus, He will deliver you. He will heal you. He will set you free. If that person would like to come forward, if anybody would like to come forward for prayer, come forth. Brother Thomas will be right here. Now that y'all pray for him, now your pastor's telling you he's got your back. Somebody might be going through the circumstances and pain that they no longer have to go through. The trial is over. Now it's time to use your faith to get out of the boat and start walking to your miracle. You want your miracle, get out of the boat and walk forward. But you got to have your faith to walk forward. It's going to be your faith. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. It was her faith that made her whole. It's going to be your faith that made you whole. Sometimes my spirit is low And it seems I can hardly go back 
I see victory There's sometimes I'm walking by faith Can't see what lies before me But still I see victory And I've just got to tell you Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by His blood You may but you're gonna lose this battle tonight So remember, can't cross the bloodline And I just gotta tell you, Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by His blood You may stare and you may fight But you're gonna lose this battle tonight So remember you can't cross the bloodline. Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by His blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sometimes the battle gets hard And it seems that we're fighting a lot But remember, we're standing on the rock Oh, Satan, if I were you Turn around and I give up too much You know you're about to lose Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan Can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by His blood You may stare and you may fight But you're gonna lose this battle tonight So remember, you can't cross the bloodline Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by His blood You may but you're gonna lose this battle tonight So remember you can't cross the bloodline Sometimes my spirit is low And it seems I can hardly go But still I see victory There's sometimes I'm walking by faith Cannot see what lies before me But still I see victory Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by His blood You may stare and you may fight But you're gonna lose this battle tonight So remember, you can't cross the bloodline Oh, and I just gotta tell you you Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by His blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sometimes my spirit is low, and it seems I can hardly go, but still. I see victory There's sometimes I'm walking by faith Cannot see what lies before me But still I see victory Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by His blood You may stay and you may fight But you're gonna lose this battle tonight So remember You can't cross the bloodline Oh, and I just gotta tell you, Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by His blood You may stare, you may fight But 
But you're gonna lose this battle tonight So remember, you can't cross the bloodline Oh, and I'm just gonna tell you, Satan You can't cross the bloodline Because I'm covered by His blood You may stare and you may fight But you're gonna lose this battle tonight Remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sometimes this battle gets hard, and it seems like we're fighting a lot. But just remember, we're standing on the rock. Old oh, Satan, if I were you, I turn around and I give up too close. You know, you're about to lose. Oh, and I'll just Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by His blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Oh, I'm just gonna tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because. I'm covered by His blood. You may stand, you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, can't cross the Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day, I know I'll be just fine, cause He knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day, I know I'll be just fine. Cause He knows my name, I don't know what tomorrow may bring. Can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I don't have all the answers to the questions of this life. But I know in whom I have believed. And He knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make. Every tear that I cry. He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine. Cause He knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make. Every tear that I cry. And He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine. Cause he knows my name. He counts the stars one and all. Knows how much sin is on the shore. Sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains high. The sea. He's in control of everything, of all creatures, great and small. And he knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain, can't see the light of day. I'll be just fine Cause He knows my name Every step that I take 
every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and He knows my name when I am well by the pain. See the light of day, I know I'll be just fine. He knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make. Every tear that I cry, and He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine. He knows my name. My cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirst in my soul, sweet bread of heaven. Feed me till I won't no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and. Oh, 
Jesus, I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be more like you. Oh, and I want to be more like you, Jesus, I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you, Jesus, I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be more like you. And I want to be more like you, Jesus, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you, Jesus, I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Oh, I want to be more like you, Jesus, I I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be a vessel you are through. I want to be more Hey, would you sing it one more time tonight? I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be a vessel you are through. I 